Hello and welcome to the Revelations 2012 Let's Play. This time we're on the fourth stage of the game, the Observatory. And thankfully the game has at this point run out of flavor text so we don't have that flow-breaking git spouting exposition at us at the beginning of the level. I can think of no finer way to begin this level than to employ some YOLO strategies and just get my groove thang on through the trap. In other words, I don't know the pattern and I'm too lazy to figure it out. It doesn't matter because I get through it undamaged anyway. Because thinking is for twats, just dance through traps and you'll be fine. Now the very keen-eyed among you have probably noticed the ceiling that has the body squished up against in this dripping blood. And you people might be thinking this foreshadows some kind of ceiling squashing trap, perhaps. And you'd be right, actually. This is the one time where the game actually foreshadows its trap usage in any kind of meaningful way. Even if the trap itself is a bit, um, underwhelming, to say the least. I kind of just pick one pillar and wait for it to come down and then just run through. It's how I do it. It's easy. Doesn't get me killed. I don't know what happens if you let it take you all the way to the top. I presume you just die instantly because that tends to happen in the Source Engine when you get crushed between two things. Although considering it's this game, it might just bug out and send you flying through walls. Who knows? I'm gonna have to try that at one point. Anyway, a new trap. Heads on spikes that jut out at timed intervals. I'm sure you can guess the pattern. I don't care. I choose to solve my problems through the medium of dance again. It seems like a surprising number of my problems can be solved by just going fuck it and dancing my way through the traps. This isn't exactly Dark Souls, people. Get used to it. Ah, some ammo. I was kind of running low. And here we run into a major obstacle of the stage. The ladder! And I mean this seriously. The AI seems to have a bit of a blind spot for straight vertical movement, so they kind of just jump off and kill themselves a lot, which ends up getting me killed later when I don't have any supporting fire. This time, however, it seems they've just foregone the ladder in its entirety and have just sort of chosen to teleport with me instead. Which I appreciate, honestly. At least they don't fucking kill themselves on the ladder like they usually do. Silver linings, I suppose. Positive thinking at this point is pretty much the only thing getting me through this game. Like how we've escaped the boring brown temple backgrounds for nice verdant greenery and the whipped cream waterfall in the background there. Splendid. So we're just gonna wander around for a bit and appreciate how absolutely shit the pop-in is on the foliage, and only the foliage for some reason, while we bumble around and try and figure out exactly what it is we're supposed to do here. These stages aren't very large, it's a small wonder I still somehow managed to get lost and confused in them. I'm not sure if I'm just retarded or if the game's being stupid, it's really hard to tell at this point. Well, this building looks suitably big and important-ish, so this is probably where we're supposed to go. Let's just kill everything out here first so they'll stop harassing us and see what's inside the building for us, shall we? Ah, you can see the purple outline through the wall. That probably means there's a skull here for us. Let's go and grab it. Alright, here we go, and oh, whoopsie-daisy, bullshit trap alert. Yes, the room immediately starts filling with poison gas that you can't really see too well until you go downstairs. What that amounts to, basically, is that the game will just inexplicably dock you about 20-odd health points or so for having the sheer temerity to push on with the game. It's like they don't want you to finish it or something. That is easily the most puzzling and stupid design decision I've ever seen in a video game. There's, there's absolutely no way to avoid taking damage there because it starts the instant you pick up the skull. And if you happen to be on low health and you don't have any hearts around, you are probably going to die there because the bots have no concept of not standing in the fucking poison. If you were watching this LP in order to figure out the stupidest and most bullshit part of this game, you can stop watching now because this is it. You have officially climbed to the peak of Mount Stupid and come out the other side. I cannot even begin to fathom the logic under which anyone would think that putting a trap like that in your game is a good idea. Just fucking why, people? Come on. Alright, fine, I'll stop complaining about it. Picking up that skull opened the path with the ladder down that we can now go through, and the bots are having a lot of trouble navigating it, it seems. So once again, they just teleport down to us. I actually seem to have really good luck with that on this run, because the bots just teleport past any parts they can't navigate properly, as opposed to flinging themselves down and killing themselves. And here's another ladder. Here's hoping the bots don't kill themselves on this. Let's just go down. Let's try and dance, actually. Oh. Right, okay, don't dance on ladders. You can't dance and climb ladders simultaneously, it seems. What a lacking feature. Okay, it seems I'm the stupid this time, because I'm the person flinging myself down ladders. I take it all back, bots. I'm as dumb as you are. Ugh. I've only just realised we've ended up back in boring brown temple corridor country as opposed to lush verdant green foliage bad pop-in country. I prefer the verdant green. It's much easier on the eyes when it's not appearing two centimetres from them. And around this corner is the second skull and the checkpoint of the level. Splendid, which means if we die from more ladder tomfoolery, we'll restart at the middle of the stage as opposed to having to go through that motherfucking trap again. And as has been standard so far, picking up the skull has summoned a whole bunch of enemies to our location. Our newly found berserk powers will probably make quick work of them, however.
Long corridor fights are uninteresting, I know. We've arrived at a far more interesting locale now, however. And look, we finally get the blast gun back. Which is annoying now, because enemies have been dropping secondary ammo for it all stage, despite the fact we cannot have it at that point. Nice to see you're consistent as ever, Dark Arts. Well, excellent. We finally found our way out of the temple corridors for what I hope is the last time. And there is some funky-looking device over there. What exactly does this do when we touch it? Ah, right. We seem to have been teleported. Well, that solves that problem. That's probably a portal, then. Good to have that one cleared up. Hmm, the bots don't actually seem to have followed us through. Oh, there they are. It's unclear whether or not they go through the portal, or if they just teleport to you when you go through it. It's hard to tell with a game like this. Come to think of it, I'm not sure if these outside areas are actually that much more exciting than the temple corridors. You're just kind of swapping one boring pallet for another. Ah, a building. Maybe there will contain something we need to use in order to unlock the last skull of the level and get a move on with things. I wonder if this is the observatory we're coming up on. The level has been going on for quite a while now. Here's a comically large lever that needs to be pulled and a rather sneakily hidden cache of shotgun ammo. The game bothers to point out every single piece of secondary ammo that all of the random mook enemies drop, but it never seems to indicate the rather sneakily hidden in plain sight ammo caches that are scattered around the level. I miss a fair few because I don't know where they are and the game probably doesn't ever point them out to me. I mean, Left 4 Dead points out every single one with little arrows on the screen, but this one just doesn't. There's another lever on the other side of the stage that solves the puzzle when pulled, although puzzle is a bit of an overstatement, honestly. It's a bit of a brain-dead thing. And this spawns the last crystal skull we need to complete the stage. The stage, however, isn't quite done yet. There's one last thing we need to do, and that, if you can see the white outline glowing at the top of the building there, is go all the way up there and push the button that will unlock the door that opens the end of the level. It's needless busy work, but I suspect they wanted us to go up here because they've actually modelled a fairly unique thing for us up here. I don't even know what to describe it as. Yes, this is the observatory. I would imagine it's fairly small for an observatory. And this is it. I think this is what they wanted us to see. It's kind of a high school diorama of the solar system. It's not very impressive. I don't know why they made us see that. This is this game's idea of a set piece. Also, note, have a look at the uh, the edges of the world there. You can just kind of see where the world stops. Not exactly playing to your strengths with regards to level design, are you, Dark Arts? Ah, yes. And pushing the button also spawned a nice horde of the enemies for us that block our way down. This is rather annoying, I find, especially when you get blowpipe enemies mixed in so that they hide on the bottom just out of reach and continue to pelt you. I seem to get fairly lucky with it on this run, though. An interesting fact about the blowpipe enemies is that you can make them become the regular melee mook type of enemy, provided you blow off the extremity that they're holding the blowpipe with. Or you can just blow off their legs. In fact, you don't even need to blow off the limb they're holding the blowpipe with, just deal enough damage to the particular limb, and they'll drop it and become a regular melee mook enemy. It's a good thing to know if you're crowded and at a want for ammo. Well, we've successfully cleared the stage. It's time to move on to the next one. We still have a chapter boss to kill. Ik, the god of the wind, is the first of many demons that you will face and have plagued mankind for bontoons. Distance yourself from his fury. Go now to defeat this evil. Now, to be fair to Dark Arts, there is some actual research going on here because Ick is in fact an actual Mayan god, the Mayan god of wind, no less. So, you know, gold star for actually doing your research. And then you immediately lose that gold star for using the word Bontoon. I'm fairly sure the word you're looking for there is Bucktoon, a Mayan unit of time. As far as I can tell, Bontoon isn't even a word. Admirable attempt, though, Dark Arts. Anyway, Ick, the god of wind. The reason I'm doing this now and not in his own video is because I don't actually think it's interesting enough to warrant his own video. I'll explain his pattern once. He flings rocks around for a bit, which moves so fast that dodging them is basically something you can't do. Also, by the way, I'm playing this on expert for no other reason than because I can. That's why the friendly fire did so much damage. I can help her up in this time, surely. Nope, that's not going to work. Then he spins around for a bit, which drags you towards him. The only trick to this is that you need to crouch so that it slows your descent towards the center. The bots don't do this, and as such, will always get flung around by this attack. You can also do what I did and wedge yourself between two rocks. I don't get that kind of luck often. Then he spawns these skull things, which are just the regular skull model blown up a bit and turned dark blue and given an animation. If you get touched by one of those, they'll fling you around a bit and you'll take full damage. Just don't move towards them. Constantly back up and you'll be fine in this fight. And when killed, they also drop ammunition. That is splendid, considering ammunition is in short supply and you only have the bloody pea shooter gun to work with. 
And that's the entire pattern for this fight. Repeat this for six whole fucking minutes and you have the idea of how to fight Ick. It's boring, and it doesn't warrant its own video. So instead I'm going to use this downtime to talk about some of the controversy surrounding the game, because everyone loves a nice bit of controversy in their LPs, don't they? I know I do. This one specifically involves a nude model of one of the characters in the game, because nudity in video games is such a big deal. Anyway, basically, someone found a nude file of one of the characters in the game. Don't know who, don't care. The dev response to this was basically they haven't taken it out because they're still using it. At the time, they apparently used the head and arms portion of the model, while sort of layering the clothes on top of it, which sounds a bit strange to me. I'm not a game developer, but that sounds like a very odd way of doing things. The model itself, though, has since been removed, so this is no longer an issue. And that was it. That was all I had. Is this fight still going? Really? Ugh, you know, just go, go to the end. No one likes this. This is boring. Fuck you, Dark Arts. This fight sucks. Okay, roughly five minutes of boring tedium skipped, and we have successfully killed Ick, the god of wind, and he has dropped the blue Suki toke for us. This is the point where you would be first getting the shotgun if you were playing the old build of the game. Yes, really, only just now. This is why the old build sucked. Anyway, with that, we have effectively cleared the first campaign, the Winds of Destruction. I'll see you next time on Feast of the Serpentine.